So let's talk instead about flexibility of language, uh, linguistic elasticity, if you like. Yes, I think I said earlier that our language, English... As spoken by us. As we speak it, yes, certainly, defines it. <laughs> um, we are defined by our language, if you will. Hello. We're talking about language. Um, <laughs> perhaps I can um, illustrate my point. Let me at least try. Um, here's a question. Um... <laughs> What is it? Ah, um, well, my question is this. Is our language, English, capable? Is English capable of sustaining demagoguery? Demagoguery? Demagoguery. And by demagoguery you mean? By demagoguery I mean demagoguery. I thought so. I mean, um... Highly charged oratory, persuasive, whipping up rhetoric. Listen to me, listen to me. If Hitler <laughs> had been British, would we, under similar circumstances, have been moved, charged up, fired up by his inflammatory speeches, or would we simply have laughed? Is English too ironic to sustain Hitlerian styles? Would his language simply have rung false in our ears? We're talking about things ringing false in our ears. Um, may I compartmentalise? I hate to, but may I? May I? <laughs> Is our language a function of our British cynicism, tolerance, resistance to false emotion, humour and so on? Or do those qualities come extrinsically, extrinsically, <laughs> um, from the language itself? It's a chicken and egg problem. We're talking about chickens, we're talking about eggs. <laughs> um, let me start a leveret here. Um, there's language and there's speech. Um, there's, there's chess and there's a game of chess. Mark the difference for me. Mark it, please. <laughs> We've moved on to chess. <laughs> Imagine a piano keyboard. Um, 88 keys. Only 88, and yet, and yet, hundreds of new melodies, new tunes, new harmonies are being composed upon hundreds of different keyboards every day in Dorset alone. <laughs> uh, our language, Tiger, our language... <laughs> hundreds of thousands of available words, frillions of legitimate new ideas... Hmm? so that I can say the following sentence and be utterly sure that nobody has ever said it before in the history of human communication. Hold the newsreader's nose squarely, waiter, or friendly milk will countermand my trousers. <laughs> Perfectly ordinary words, but never before put in that precise order. A unique child delivered of a unique mother. And yet, oh, and yet, we all of us spend all our days saying to each other the same things time after weary time. I love you, don't go in there, get out, you have no right to say that, stop it, why should I, that hurt, help, Marjorie is dead. Hmm? That surely is a thought to take out for a cream tea on a raining sunny afternoon. So, so to you, language is more than just a means of communication? Oh, of course it is, of course it is, of course it is, of course it is. <laughs> Language is my mother, my father, my husband, my brother, my sister, my whore, my mistress, my checkout girl. Language is a, a complimentary moist lemon-scented cleansing square or a handy freshen up my pet. Um, language is the breath of God. Language is the dew on a fresh apple. It's the soft rain of dust that falls into a shaft of morning light as you pluck from an old bookshelf uh, a half-forgotten book of uh, erotic memoirs. Um, <laughs> Language is the creak on a stair. It's a spluttering match held to a frosted pane. It's, it's a half-remembered childhood birthday party. It's the warm, wet, trusting touch of a leaking nappy. Uh, the hulk of a charred panzer. The underside of a granite boulder. The first downy growth on the upper lip of a Mediterranean girl. Uh, it's cobwebs long since overrun by an old Wellington boot. <laughs> no night. So, in a sense, in a sense, in a sense, Duncan, uh, we are left with those two. Uh, uh, two. None other, nary another, not one other more. Uh, we have on the one side of the gulf, the chasm, the dividing line, if you please, we have the beauty of ideas, and on the, on the other, I don't know, the other term of the equation, if that's nicer, we have the idea of beauty. Uh, am I sensing through? Am I connecting? Uh, we're busy discussing the idea of beauty and the beauty of ideas. Now hold a thought, Geoffrey, would you? I'm going to give you a thought. I'd like you to hold it for me. Would you do that for me, please? I'm going to hold a thought now. <laughs> if beauty is only an idea, a form, a pattern, a template, a paradigm, an ideal, an idea, if you like, with an L, then what is the beautiful? Beauty is unattainable, but the beautiful surrounds us. Uh, we return to language, Philip. We make a return to language. That's the idea I'd like you to hold for me, uh, if you'd be ever so splendid. Right, right, well. 
we've made a return to language. Listen to me, uh, listen to me, lovelet. Language <laughs> circumscribes beauty, uh, confirms, confines, limbs and delineates. It colours and contains. Yet language is only a tool, a tool that we use to dig up the beauty that surrounds us and is, we take, our only an absolute real. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. Um, uh, uh, hush, tish, vibble. Uh, I'm streaking ahead. Uh, let me explain, expound, expand and exposit. Would you? <laughs> I find you beautiful, but you are not beauty. <laughs> Whoops. Therefore, you contain a property of beauty. Therefore, the substance of which you exhibit a property must exist. Where is it? That is language's task. Uh, 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 who was it who said, uh, my language is the universal whore that I must make into a virgin? Who was it? Kate Aidy? <laughs> I think, I think it was Karl Krauss, but it needn't have been, it needn't have been. Now, Tommy, Tommy, it's time to ask you to give back to me the thought that I bade you hold. Um, I was holding the thought that we'd made a return to language. Correctly, Correctington. Language <laughs> pursues beauty, harries it, hounds it, courses it across the rough lands of inquiry, and in so doing can itself be beautiful. Ripple on ripple, image on image, wheel within a wheel like the circles that we find in the windmills of our mind. <laughs> Noel Harrison. Noel, as you so rightly Harrison. Now, language can be beautiful, and Madeline asleep in lap of legends old, plenitude, dishes, martyr, breasts, tumble, emolument, forage, smitten, plenum, vulva. Words that have their own sonority and beauty, which is extrinsic, extrinsic to their connotational or denotational referendums. I think he said vulva. <laughs> so, Timothy. I'll leave you with a thought, a breath, a fruit that drops from the boughs of my imaginings. Think beauty, but be beautiful. Say beauty, but say it beautifully. Beauty is duty and duty beauty. So there. Good night. I don't feel quite so well now. <laughs>